What's going on everyone? Welcome back to my channel. Today I have another session for you. This was a webinar that I hosted for free community. Now it will be available on YouTube. I hope you enjoy and learn something new from it. Without further ado, let's get into it. to show you is number one structure of uh, you know the weekly structure and how pump and dump pattern playing out perfectly um in euro pair at least euro jpy euro gbp euro usd and a lot of other pairs and i'm gonna talk to you about basically the purpose of it and why the moves happen the way it does. How last two week went and how basically this two week that we had is going on. So let's focus starting from here, which is August 24. Price, as you guys can see, is cons was consolidating here in this range where we had a new low created on Friday. Let me just make this a little better. Okay. I want to talk about some key uh, points about how you actually can manage your trade. And regardless of your strategy, it's really important that you take care of those um, you know, points in your trading, which is mostly trading on well, trade management, okay? So we had this new low kind of created. What majority of people expect is a price break out to the downside after this consolidation and the way price was forming, the lower lows, the structure in the eyes of a retail trader was indicating cells right here okay and they did break out throw wicks down here trap you know those are not patient although in this scenario they would lose anyway but they will lose faster i should say so there's a bunch of sellers trap here they think it's breaking and they're going to the downside and then right before news inducement to the downside whips off for a day which basically cleared the board getting rid of both buyers and sellers here and this is guys this is literally where you can call it a reset okay this is where you can call it a reset and be like all right board is kind of clear now there is just, you know, more kind of a swing traders that are still in the market. All kind of scalper day traders are wiped out of the order books. I don't care about the profit or loss because some people, I mean, like they get in a trade, they close it within 50 seconds, call themselves trader because they made profit. And they had no idea why the move happened. They're like looking at daily candle going up. So price probably going to continue go up. Like reasons that you're not going to believe what I tell you. But I always look at, you know, retail traders stuff. If I see a, if I get an email from TradingView saying someone shared a new chart or idea, I will actually go and check it out because I want to see the level of, well, I don't want to say stupidity, but level of stupidity in the charts because so many indicators and so many different methods, what it's always same in all those charts that they don't know what actually is happening in the market. They're dependent into the tools or zones or trend lines that they have. Instead 
us, we try at Forexia, we try to understand the reason behind every move that he allows us to predict the next move in a more probable manner. I'm not saying we know of why every move, um, uh, where every move is going, but I'm sure when we find a trade opportunity is more probable to happen in a way we want it rather than, you know, the way retail trader think, all right? So after this consolidation for four days and the whipsaw clearing anybody who got into this trade and didn't see any profit or loss, price basically in Friday pushed, you know, and basically went all the way above this consolidation box. What I have as a tools for me is my DMA, where in the situation like this, where it goes to consolidation, it tells me that to stay away. And when actually shift happens by the reject or respect of price to the moving averages, I can confirm if price is continuing to move further or not. It just confluence the next confluence for me would be a trap if i can find a trap that actually makes sense for me and dmas are in line i can actually go back and you can see it will play out as some sort of support resistance for retail trader but i don't bother i just look at here and i can see already that people can see and say price can go higher. DMA, in the other hand, says price can go higher. So I'm gonna repeat it. DMA says price can go higher. Trap says retail believe price cannot go higher. When this happened is where I am into the market, waiting, patiently for one last stop hunt to inducing all retail trader into taking the position and only when that happened i'm into the market waiting to get it you know get in so right here is where you see i just literally copy paste this bearish daily structure use the setting to kind of flipped it or, or mirror it actually. And then I'm putting it here. See, it perfectly plays out. Hit the resistance, stop onto the DMA, engulfing, close the above, and then closing above DMA is still nowhere close to a buy confirmation for retail trader here. And what they want to see is break in retest. By the time I'm into the trade, compared to when retail trader get into the trade, there is 40 pips different. Uh, I'm kind of out around here, or even if I hold, they wouldn't be in profit. They will have to look at 16 hours at least of drawdown. And if they stayed in, they might see like 30, 40 pips of profit. So this is how I choose my setups, right? And coming back to the, the week that happened right here, we're seeing literally the same exact thing here. We had this support and resistance area and also we had this low, this is Euro USD, by the way, that was created and respected, okay? And then once price broke this, don't cut up into what average I use. I'm just looking at the chat for a second and I see someone looking at um, EMA and says, do you use different EMA setup each pair? No. I don't use the each EMA setup each pair. What are, what are my DMAs exactly? I cannot tell you, that's a whole course. However, what I'm trying to tell you here is that D 
DMA is literally one piece of this structure where I get a little more confirmation. What you need to understand is more than just what is these averages. Okay, so back to here, we had this what the money do. This is something that I already have the free book about it with over 60, 70 different picture. And I have a full course about it. So this is nothing I'm trying to sell you, right? I give you literally this for free and bunch of videos on YouTube. And you could literally make the money, make the same trade as I did. And I, um, I actually didn't send this to anybody, um, to my student, but you could make the exact same trade. You could take it by the knowledge that we already shared. This is nothing more than a W formation. This is nothing more than a signature trade that Dylan already shared in YouTube. This is nothing more than what the money do set up all three different name, but exactly same thing. Signature trade, W formation, daily structure, what the money do. It's all here and it's all free. It's all free. That's the madness about us, right? That's the madness about Forexio, where we literally give you the keys that you need for absolutely free. But yet still people think we're hiding and we're having secrets or something. No, we have better tools that helps us, you know, to maybe get a better risk to reward, get a more probable setup in terms of entry, but nothing about analysis. Right where I bought here after this engulfing candle, DMA says sell. Why did I buy? Because I'm not dependent to the DMA, right? I care a lot about them. I know where price reach WMA, they usually make a multi-session M or W and continue moving down, which you can see happen. And that's why I said it's the greatest opportunity for this week. Because you could literally start in Monday, sell a buy candle, take the M formation, or again, sell a buy candle, be into the down move, and then identify the trap, find the confirmation entry, being the buy, or just take the DMA retest, or which is, this is just put 50 and 100, 50 and 100 moving average. That's the, basically the, the yellow and the green one. Okay. 50, 100. These are the closest one that I can tell you in this, right? And you can literally get the same candle entry, the same candle entry. I'm going to repeat this guys. DMA is not about only the green and the yellow average or orange average that you're seeing here. DMA is a concept and it's about multi time frame analysis and how to catch traps and induction from an average. So don't think what I'm trying to show you here, I got it from DMA and now I'm trying to show you something else and tell you it was because of it. I'm literally showing you that right here is where DMA says, sell it. And we bought it. I, I remember I uh, called it into the, in my chat room saying I'm, I'm in a buy like 10 minutes before this shift happens. Just to say that, you know, it's not like I just took it without telling anyone, <laughs> but this is again, the best opportunity that you had this week to take sell from here buy the midweek reversal. And now you could have added here. And I was out actually in a buy from here too, Asian session. Now this is something that you can say, you can blame DMA about this. You can blame DMA about my buy today saying, how did you not think this drop is making them continue going back down? This is where DMA told me, but not here. And this was the major move that happened. This is like freaking 30 pips. This is where that major 130 pip happened. 
and there was no anything about DMA. It was pure trap trading. Okay, that's about EU. Um, let's let's take a look at EJ2. That was pretty good setup too. Very similar, very similar, almost identical. You can see I'm right here. Kind of same low. Well, actually, I draw it like this when it formed. So W formation. The signature trade was a little bit smaller, right? A tiny wedge formation, breakout, W formation. And now I wanna bring your attention to something that actually made me believe these are going up in the first place. It was a four hour time frame candlestick story. Candle formation in four hour time frame if you pay attention, what do you see? What do you see here on this circle? I want everybody in the chat room call me crazy if you don't see this as a FU candlestick pattern. That was the reason behind this VIX to F up every retail trader, every pending order down here activated every retail trader looking at this pair getting into the cell any robots will see low broken cells any indicator will show this cell. and notice you go to lower time frame you don't see vix anymore what you see is long big bearish candles right bearish candles Engulfing bearish. Engulfing bearish at that resistance. But when you, it's only need a click to come in four hour and just waiting to four, for four hour to close to see only VIX down here and be like, this is what a retail trader see and this is what I see. I saw this two VIX down here in four hour close there. It gave it away to me. I looked at 30 minutes and I'm like, this is a buy. This is definitely buy. My buy was executed the moment they broke HDMA and I got in. Same with Euro USD. Only after I saw this, four hour candles, I went to Euro USD and I saw the exact same setup happening there. So I took them both. If I take it to GJ, it's actually more good because if you go to one hour, this FU candle again gave it away. This FU candle told me, hold on. Notice that this is right after a bullish engulfing and closes above DMA. But it's not the time I'm looking at trading and this is one hour before London when it's do the FU candle above the previous day's high and then followed by a bearish candle down. Then I actually called this buy to students. And when I saw this, I called it that I don't like the candles anymore. Let's close the buy. And then this happened. So for you, in order to see how it's happening, you should have your prediction. Use daily structure wisely, bro. That's my um, that's the best thing I can tell you. You see, this is a perfect daily structure. You know, when market goes into the certain way that you already learned from us, that it's gonna just push and push till you know it stop everyone out. You don't see really M formation here, right? Starting from here, if I mark it up for you starting from here up to here any day that you could actually trade well it was a buy structure there wasn't any kind of sell structure that you can tell me it was good enough to take right 
for that reason, paying attention to where breakout happens is the key for me. This is one good example right here. Okay, so pay attention here, please. When I see resistance forming here while DMA is buy, I expect price to push down and then go up. I don't expect them to break this to the upside because the moment they break and retest it, people are gonna start buying it. So market maker has to be really careful not to give that signal to retail trader. If they break it above, and I'm in a buy, I'll close my buy. What I want to see is break to the downside first, then I will stay in the break and I'll participate here. So daily structure is literally your answer. You can wait for candle close. Yes, Abid. Um, any candle close over 30 minutes is really good in my opinion um, to care about. Like, if you don't, if you cannot really see what you want to see, let's say I'm looking at, um, I'm looking at here in 15 minutes time frame. let's say. I'm looking at this thinking this is a second leg stop hunt of this M. You see, this is, you, you might see this, right? You can see this M formation, second leg stop hunt above the high, right? But this is in 15 minutes. If you're not sure, or you wanna say, see this is 3.30 and you wanna say, um, I don't know, it's just one, maybe today they form another M, this was consolidation. Instead of asking so many different questions that what can happen, what I do is say, all right, it's 30 minutes. Let's wait for 15 minutes. Sorry, uh, one hour to close. If it's in one hour and I can't make my decision, I say, let's wait for four hours to see how that close and so on. In the same day, September 4, let's go on GJ and see in the same, um, September 4, there you go. So they had a slight break anyway, and then break it down. Oh, not a good example. But yeah, stay, wait for the higher time frame candle to close to get a better confirmation. Um, for example, this engulfing here, they're probably gonna be another engulfing if you go in 15 minutes too. You see, um, that's a 15 minutes engulfing. And if you go into one hour as well, you see there is no engulfing, four hour. Now there is engulfing. So this fractal nature of the market also helps a lot. And your stop loss, how many pips? Um, Sabir, I have a variable stop loss from 10 to 30 pips. It depends on setup and the pair I trade. Like today I got into EU and um, the trade I showed you, it was like 15 pips. But in here, I got in with 10 pips at down here. On EJ, I got in with 20 pips here. As you can see, it's 20 pips. I got in here. So it's really depend on setup. I don't make myself go with like 10 pips, but like Brandon does. Whatever works for you, don't change your plan because I say. The analysis or whatever in um, GBPJPY, this is what I think it's about to happen. This is a daily time frame, the same week feel I explained to you. However, I, I feel there's gonna be a little bit of a consolidation here and then a push to the upside, breaking the highs, consolidate even more, and then coming for the weak feel. This is just what I think based on copy pasting different structures into here. And obviously it can just literally just push down from here as we, as we see it's going down pretty hard. Already I think it's about like down here. But we'll see what happened. That's what I see.
Um, let me continue the chat. Bro, how do you deal with London breakouts, which are sometimes fake as you do entries before one hour London session? I mostly stop hunt, stop hunt in London session. You're right, bro. So the filter for me is kind of DMA. Okay. I will try to take trades unless it's mid big reversal. I try trades in line with DMA. And then when it comes to around London session, I expect a stop hunt in line with it. So this tells me buy. I want to see W formation or better say stop hunt down. Okay. Consolidation stop hunt down. This is what I would draw basically before London session. I see consolidation here. I say, okay, come down to here from W. Then it would push down, goes up above it, then I'm in. Okay, so if it does a stop on to the upside, it break to the upside, I stay away. That's the second question that the answer was daily structure. I hope you guys paying attention. How crazily important is this pattern? In your entry, into, in your filtering, in knowing when to expect price to come back to you and you should get out, everything. Very important stuff. Yeah, I think EU just took me out at break even. Yep. <laughs> Okay. Is GBP USD make a pullback to go down because today is Friday? Um, I can't really tell you, bro. It's it's a consolidation, so up and down, up and down. I don't think this is gonna go really much more down. I have no one to talk about. I cannot say it. We have no control over it. However. I don't think market maker having enough liquidity to either go up right now or they're coming to the downside. I think they're literally inducing people. But if I want to make a guess, I go for a buy, to be honest. You know, people selling during the week and this can surprise can happen, but I do not want to take any trade here. Let's take a look at one hour and four hour. Yeah, definitely one hour shows even more of it. We are approaching by weekly moving average in GU2, which is crazy. All the way from a Tuesday reversal. So yeah, I cannot tell you anything about it now. Um, let's see the rest. Thanks. How far is the stop loss for DMA entry? Uh, it's really depends on where are you getting in, bro. It really depends on when, when are you getting in and where are you getting in? Um, DMA entry can have a 70 60 50 people stop loss if you want to take an entry in four hour time frame you know what i'm saying but overall um in average it's somewhere from 10 to 20. all right so um let me check the chats again is the current candle on eu close if the current candle on EU close as a pin bar, can one enter? I don't recommend anyone to enter right now anymore, especially that now um, the DMA was broken by the last 30 minute candle. We are in four hour right now. So you can see that this 30 minute candle it's broken so far. If you go to 15 minutes, it's already broken. Now, this is where you want to wait and, you know, wait for the candle 30 minutes to close to see if it's going to reject or not. But due to the time of the day, 
Friday, New York session. It's not an NFV, so I don't really recommend you taking any trade, to be honest. It's about preserving your capital in this business. Absolutely, Frilo, absolutely. Yeah, GBP gonna be fun. <laughs> How do you copy and paste on trading view? Um, if you are on Windows, um, you can basically tap, uh, click on whatever you want to copy and paste. If you're on a PC, Control C and then Control V. If you're on a Mac, Command C and then Command V, it will copy paste it for you. Another way is to basically use this setting here, click on here and then use clone to give you another one or just copy paste, right click, you'll have the same option as well. How DMA give confirmation during consolidation? DMA won't give entry confirmation during consolidation, but what it will give you is a directional bias during consolidation. If they are consolidating below averages, that indicates sell most of the time. It's more probable to sell if they're consolidating below averages. And it's more probable to buy if they're consolidating above averages. That's the confirmation. That's the guide DMA will give you in terms of direction and not DMA any averages. You know, that's a that's just logic behind averages. If price consolidating above it, there's more probable way to go up. Euro USD news, it's in the structure. Absolutely, it is in the structure. I see Neo is here too. What's up, my brother? Um, yeah, it can. I'm just waiting here. I'm out on break even. And I just checked my other account. Uh, I didn't have that one on break even. So that's actually back on profit. So <laughs> one account out on break even, one account still in the game. Let's go. <laughs> Can one succeed using support and resistance traps, DMA and candlestick only without trend line? That's me, my man. That's me. I do not draw a trend line. I don't even draw that support and resistance traps. I only look at them and I can see it. I have zero drawing on my chart when I'm drawing. That's how I trade. I look at it and I decide just like Brandon where it takes two seconds for him. It might take a little longer for me, not two seconds, but I just look at my chart and I call it. It's either going to work out or not. But yeah. Definitely can, you can succeed with what you just said. You can more than succeed. <laughs> Sam says, family meeting, all DMA bounce together. Don't trade. Oh, okay. Thanks, bro. Um, bro, do you trade your stop loss or fixed TP? Um, I have a fixed TP most of the time. However, Brandon um, is really working on me to change it to the trailing. We'll see what happens, but I most of the time have a take profit. And to be honest, my TPs are pretty accurate. Like my students or like people who are in contact with me a lot, they get like setups from me. Like you can talk to them. My, um, my TPs are pretty accurate. Like in this one, I gave TP literally here. So I think I'm good enough in identifying where price is heading to. But in terms of trade management, definitely your growth can be much better if you trade. Will says, can you please share some of your trading plan? What are you looking for every time you look at the chart? Every time I look at the chart, the first thing is peak. Which direction peak is set? In this case, peak is set to the downside. And I can see based on the trap on Tuesday reversal that people are trapping a buy and peak is set. When I understand which direction peak is set, then I want to find induction. After induction, 
I'm looking for basically daily structure, stop hunt, and entry candle. That's it. Very close to Brandon, guys. It's just a little different name. Brandon says push, pullback, accumulation, buy. I say pick is set, induction is over. So consolidation, stop on down, which I said daily structure, right? And then up. So Brandon would not take trade like this when they are below HDMA. But for me, if they kind of form the W, I'll take the trade. Like something like this, Brandon would not take this as a D as an EMA respect, but I will definitely take it as an EMA respect and I sell it. So very close with Brandon. However, in the last, he want to see consolidation EMA respect. I want to see consolidation daily structure. That's the only difference. And that's how I look at the chart. As simple as Brandon, it just takes a little longer. I can literally do three seconds as he does. But yeah, maybe like 10 seconds. So like if I want to look at market here, I'm like resistant here. They can play around the high. DMA says buy. Pick is set. Induction to the down going up. Price push down. Second leg come up. Engulfing retest. I'm in here. Trend line, trap line. Yeah, Brandon says trend line is trap line. The reason I do not draw trend lines much is because you can draw it 200 different way. Like you can draw it like this and I have to say, yeah, makes sense. You draw it like this, I have to say, yeah, makes sense. You draw it like this, I have to say, yeah, making sense, bro. You're good. And then you draw like this, I'm like, you're genius. Why you don't really know what you're doing, you're just dropping line there. Because it's so many different ways to draw it, I don't even draw it at all. Like literally DMA is telling me buy, 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 don't buy, wait, sell. You know, so when I have that, I don't need trend line. Exactly, EMAs are my trend line. Like you say, price is an uptrend, I say DMA says buy. We both saying the same thing in a different language. <clears throat> um, how happy Santiago. Yep, trend lines are very subjective. EMA, there will be same all charts. That is correct. Absolutely. And that's why I love EMAs. You can take them as a dynamic support and resistance. You can take them as a, you know, imaginary trend or in my case, you know, catching end of induction with it. There is so much into average people don't know. <laughs> and that's why I try to do on DMA hack to show you all different way of using moving averages, right? How do I copy and paste? Sorry, bro. I explained, but copy paste and what? Like charts? Yes. You mean the ghost pattern, I guess. Okay, <laughs> my bad. Okay, so um, on the left tab here, you have this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. The seventh one here is the long and short position. There is down here bars pattern. You click on it and then choose from like points A to B. And I usually want to find start of induction, which is here. You click on it and then you choose the end of it. And then daily structure kind of ended here. You click on it, it will give you the bar. You can change the color. You can flip it. You can mirror it. So basically buy and sell is literally with a click. So I can put this here and then copy paste it put it here and basically for the next day, I can again, copy paste it, put it here, change the mirror. And now we have a buy structure kind of. Then copy paste this one and put it here. Now you have even 
Well, that's exactly the same thing. Copy paste it, put it in the day before. It's almost always the same thing. Okay. Um, session went a little too long, but I want to tell you the last nugget piece of nugget in here. Um, I hope you guys learned from this session. The last thing I want to add is about trading management, guys. It's very important. I want you to pay attention to two different, very important aspects of managing a trade. And when you can do both, nothing can stop you. If you become part of this group, nothing can really stop you, okay? Um, the first one in here, the let's call this A and let's call this B, okay? And you wanna be the X, okay, in middle. So the part A is, risk to reward okay minimum of one to two risk to reward this is what i want you to practice okay minimum of one to two risk to reward if you don't feel a setup giving you minimum of one to two do not get in okay and the second one would be basically um the win ratio Okay, the win ratio. That means basically cutting the losses. Don't allow a lot of losses to occur. Plus, make sure losses are always smaller than wins. And wins are always bigger. Anything more than one to two, you perfect. Just do it, right? Uh, 110, 15, 14. That's the minimum. If you hold your account history, I don't care about, you know, myself. I close one to five. It could go one to 12 yesterday in two trade. But it's over one to two anyway. What I closed is over one to two. If you make sure that you have trades that have more probability to win in a more amount, basically two to three times more than what you risk. Plus you make sure your losses are sh less than before. And this comes with filtering the trade, not taking every trade that you see, making sure you take those setups that it actually become, come out blue more often. And then if you be in middle, that you win more than what you lose in terms of times, how many trades. And also you make more when you win than you lose. If you combine this together, I don't care what's your account balance. You're going to be rich. You're going to be rich. Okay. You want to trade with 200 or 2000 or 20,000 or 200,000 or $2 million. I don't care. You are going to be crazy rich, crazy, crazy rich. I know people with one to two living the life you dream of. And we have the ways that you can make far away from one to two. And just the rest is, is you cut the bad trades and you're set, okay? I had a pretty uh, crazy, I saw a crazy result of someone flipping 50,000 to like $25 million in a year. And I'm telling you, that's how they do it, okay? Yes, yes, Sam 9 y <laughs> Yep, that's pretty much it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the session. Let me stop.